This is Earth Files, the award-winning news site with the latest updates in science, environment, and real X-Files. Podcasting in-depth reports beyond the 6 o'clock news by Emmy Award-winning journalist Linda Moulton Howe. It's ironic that in March 2008, a TV network such as Fox in New York City and the cable distributor History Channel would finally do reports about the strange aerial dragonfly-shaped craft that first showed up in 2007 photographs. But now it's a year later, and they haven't done any substantive research. Their sarcastic reports have left viewers with a false impression that the photos were all from California and most likely CGI Photoshop creations. And neither conclusion is true. Why did Fox have a segment about the Dragonfly drones? Because the Los Angeles Times on March 18, 2008, headlined, quote, A UFO cold case, with a photograph of two private investigators named Frankie Dixon and T.K. Davis. The two were hired by a European group to track down one of last year's eyewitnesses who photographed a dragonfly machine over a power line in Capitola, California, on May 16, 2007. The eyewitness photographer's internet name was Rajman1977, not R-A-J-I, as written in the L.A. Times photo caption. Superficial and inaccurate reporting by television and other media about complex phenomena is notorious, and misinformation continues about the 2007 dragonfly-shaped aerial drone photographs. I had taken to calling the objects drones because eyewitnesses had the impression that the silent hovering craft were not manned. I think it is valuable to review first what happened last year and then look at the timeline of eyewitnesses who have seen dragonfly craft since at least 1987. The first two images of the dragonfly-shaped drone in 2007 were dated May 5th from Lake Tahoe. The photos were sent anonymously by someone identifying themselves as MUFON Submitter 7013 first posted on the ufocasebook.com website. In those first two photographs, the tall, thin wires rising from the central ring are one of the unique features described by most dragonfly drone observers. Then a week later, on May 11, 2007, Coast to Coast AM webmaster Lex received an email with six close-up images of an odd dragonfly-shaped aerial craft photographed in the Bakersfield, California region. The emailer called himself Chad and asked for anonymity to protect his family. His photographs were dated May 6, 2007, a day after Lake Tahoe. In addition to the dragonfly-shaped body that had appendages sticking out from a large ring, Chad's images, like Lake Tahoe, also showed rising from the ring slightly curved, thin wires that formed a tall circular crown above the dragonfly body. Chad also got a close-up of letters, numbers, and symbols on the long tail of the dragonfly craft. Lex and I talked about the photos, and he put me in touch with Chad. I have interviewed and or corresponded with 12 eyewitnesses about their encounters with dragonfly-shaped aerial craft that go back as far as 1987 in a hangar at Barksdale Air Force Base in Shreveport, Louisiana. Back in 1987, an eyewitness touring a Barksdale Air Force Base air show saw a dragonfly-shaped craft in a hangar that was very similar to what the Birmingham, Alabama military subcontractor photographed above power lines in May 2006. I have talked at length by phone with the engineer who toured Barksdale Air Force Base in 1987. He does not want to jeopardize his career, but wants the public to know what he saw 21 years ago. I have his full name, address, and phone number. Barksdale Air Force Base is in Shreveport, Louisiana, west of Birmingham, Alabama, where the military subcontractor photographed a simpler version of the Dragonfly drone in May 2006. Southeast of Birmingham in Montgomery, Alabama is Maxwell Gunter Air Force Base. 
Near there, on June 25, 2007, an infrared security technician had a close encounter with an aerial dragonfly, which you will hear later in this Earth Files podcast. So between 1987 and 2007, In that one close region of Shreveport, Louisiana, and Birmingham and Montgomery, Alabama, there have been three military-related dragonfly drone encounters. Nine years later, in October 1995, north of Tucson, Arizona, a dragonfly-shaped drone hovered within 20 feet of a hiker's head. He talked to me in June of 2007 about the encounter about how scared he was and how he did not want the government coming down on his head if it were a secret government project. That's why he never reported the event. But because I have been recording drone eyewitnesses with or without real names and locations, he agreed to talk with me anonymously. He wants to know what the dragonfly-shaped drones are. I have his full name, address, phone number, where he works, and his professional background. Ten years after that, in May 2005 in Sequoia National Park, California, a retired California state mental health worker told me that she saw a dragonfly-shaped aerial craft. She has asked me to call her Shirley P., but I have her full name, address, phone, and employment background. She became very upset with Internet rumors that all the drone photographs were fake CGI and Photoshop creations. She knew she had seen with her own eyes a strange aerial object that matched the Chad images of May 6, 2007. She saw the aerial machine while standing next to a Sequoia Park ranger who was giving her directions and who told her the drone was used to look for forest fires. Shirley saw the same drone a second time in the park when she stopped to get further driving instructions from a road crew. She did not have a camera with her. The next year, in May 2006, in Birmingham, Alabama, a military subcontractor I am calling John Smith saw a dragonfly drone. As a subcontractor for the military, he cannot jeopardize his career. But he and I have corresponded by email, and I have his full name, address, and phone number. He took a photograph in May 2006 in a residential section of Birmingham, Alabama, with a Canon digital camera. Mr. Smith was working near a construction site and heard a low buzzing sound like a transformer. He looked up and saw an aerial machine shaped like a dragonfly hovering above an electrical power pole. Also in May 2006, on the 17th, Robert Mariotti, a clinical hypnotherapist and doctor of divinity in Canoga Park, California, spoke with me on the record about his sighting around 10 p.m. He was stopped at a red light when the object popped into view, not traveling from anywhere. He said the aerial object looked like a horseshoe crab in profile, glowing fluorescent apple green that sparkled like a Christmas snow globe glitters. When Robert Mariotti saw my Earth Files reports, he contacted me by email and phone to say the wires curving up above and the long tail in the various photographs were also the same shape as the green fluorescent object that hovered motionless about 10 feet above a tree at the Corbin Avenue intersection near the Northridge Mall. Another driver next to Robert also saw the object. After several seconds... The strange green glowing object moved forward about five feet and then disappeared by popping out like it had popped in. A month later, on June 10, 2006, in Yosemite National Park, California, a mother and her two sons were camping and saw a dragonfly-shaped drone for several minutes. The boys aimed their flashlights on it, which caused the drone to stop midair without sound or motion. When it moved again... It jerkily went in another direction and repeated that odd behavior several times whenever the boys aimed their flashlights on it. The mother sketched the aerial object, which had a structure coming down from the ring, similar to a different shape that would appear in California's Big Basin Redwood State Park the following year in June 2007. The mother corresponded with me by email and sent me sketches of what she and her son saw. 
One of her sketches and all the Dragonfly drone photos mentioned in this podcast are in my March 21, 2008, Earth Files reports entitled Dragonfly-Shaped Aerial Craft, Current Media Misinformation versus Eyewitnesses 1987-2007. to A year after the Yosemite National Park encounter, on May 5, 2007, in Lake Tahoe, California, a person identifying themselves only as MUFON Submitter 7013 submitted two photographs of a dragonfly-shaped drone to ufocasebook.com. I have had no independent communication with that photographer. But the next day, on May 6, 2007, the man calling himself Chad took several clear digital camera images of a dragonfly-shaped drone that was more complicated than the Lake Tahoe craft. Numbers, letters, and symbols can be seen extending along the tail. I have corresponded several times with Chad, and I know his full name. Ten days later, on May 16, 2007, in Capitola, California, a man calling himself Rajman 1977 used his Konica Minolta camera to photograph a dragonfly-shaped drone above a power pole that looks very similar to the Chad photos, except the Capitola drone has two box-like appendages on the ring. The Capitola drone also had symbols on its tail. I know Rajman's full name and corresponded with him in several emails. Rajman, like the others, was angered by and scared of potential ridicule in the wake of all the CGI Photoshop attacks. Rajman was considering the possibility of doing an anonymous recorded interview with me, but decided against it and has not replied to further email inquiries since May of 2007. The two hired private investigators featured in the Los Angeles Times on March 18, 2008, are looking for Rajman. But back to early June 2007, ufocasebook.com received a photograph of a more complicated and more sinister-looking version of the dragonfly-shaped drone allegedly photographed in the Big Basin Redwood State Park of California, northwest of Santa Cruz, on June 5, 2007, by a person calling himself Stephen. I have not had independent communication with him. However, on that same day of June 5, 2007, another eyewitness bicycling in the Big Basin Redwoods Park also saw and photographed the complex, sinister-looking aerial machine. He calls himself Ty B, and he emailed me about the three encounters he had with a dragonfly-shaped drone that looked the same as Stephen's images. Ty B mailed me 12 photograph prints of the object. He said kept turning slowly in the air, not too far above, where he and his cycling buddies stopped to watch and Ty photographed. After the Big Basin craft, no other photographs of the mysterious dragonfly-shaped drones emerged in 2007. But on Tuesday, June 26, 2007, the mystery of the dragonfly-shaped aerial drones took another turn with the release of an alleged secret report containing photographs of alleged extraterrestrial technologies entitled, quote, Commercial Applications Research for Extraterrestrial Technology, unquote, known with the acronym CARAT, which contained a Q486 research report dated December 1986, Palo Alto, California, by the Palo Alto CARAT Laboratory, also known as PACL. The CARAT Laboratory's research goal in the document is stated as, quote, achieving a greater understanding of extraterrestrial technology, within the context of commercial applications and civilian use, unquote. The document states that the Carrot Q486 research, quote, focused on four key subjects, all of which were based on artifacts of extraterrestrial origin obtained from crash site recovery operations conducted during the last two decades within the continental United States between 1966 and 1986, unquote. The four key subjects are listed as, one, personal anti-gravity generator, so named for its small portable size, three-dimensional image recorder projector, 
a complex system of symbols and geometric constructs capable of both defining the functionality of certain artifacts as well as manipulating their behavior crudely analogous to a computer programming language but without the need for a compilation or interpretation phase. Isaac said that he sneaked out the carrot document during his work time for the lab between 1984 and 1987. The photographs show what are described as extraterrestrial instruments used for anti-gravity and for three-dimensional image recording and projecting. The sizes of the photographed instruments are only inches long, according to Isaac in the document. But the instruments contain a symbol language that resembles what has been photographed in dragonfly drones by Chad in the Bakersfield, California region, by Rajman in Capitola, California, and by Ty B in the Big Basin Redwood State Park northwest of Santa Cruz, California. In addition to the symbol language, the carrot document has a photograph of rings that closely match the structure of the rings in the large-scale dragonfly drones. Eyewitnesses have estimated the lengths of the big-scale dragonfly drones to be about 25 feet. Isaac's email and documents imply that this particular extraterrestrial technology was part of an American military effort to use civilian scientists to back-engineer the ET technology and to come up with commercial uses at the Carrot Laboratory in Palo Alto. That ET technology allegedly can control gravity and project three-dimensional images that would look real to us humans, but are something akin to what we know as holograms. The document also implies that the projected image technology can record the environment around it. With this concept of an extraterrestrial technology that can neutralize gravity and project holograms that can record data for whatever unknown reason from the Earth around it, here is what happened on Monday, June 25, 2007, six miles from Maxwell Air Force Base and its Gunter Air Force Base Annex in Montgomery, Alabama. The eyewitness is a longtime technical specialist in security and educated about infrared frequency technologies. Because his work is highly sensitive, he has asked that I not use his actual name. Early Monday morning, June 25, 2007, at 5.45 a.m., he was on duty in his security work that involves 32 infrared cameras. The cameras I'm telling you about are mounted up high, okay, within 20, 30 feet. I was doing a regular check when I noticed beside a tree what looked like a ring. I could look up and I could see this thing, and it wasn't attached to the tree. It wasn't in the tree. It was to the side of the tree, and it had these long wires that stuck out of the top and then just sort of curved and went up and disappeared. Mm -hmm. It looked like they just sort of faded out. They didn't stop. They just faded out. And as I looked at it at an angle, and I could see it looked like a tail on a helicopter, shaped like fan blades, like a ceiling fan. And I thought, well, this is weird. I could see because of the light from the street lights. We have street lights in the area and a lot of you know, high mercury vapor lights. I could see these patterns on the bottom of it that looked like blotches, but it looked like some type of hieroglyphics. And I sort of stood there and looked at it for a while. It did not move. It did not make any noise at all. When I saw it, I'm like, oh, my God, this thing was, like, staring at me. It just gave me the heebie-jeebies. So you had the feeling that this might actually be monitoring you specifically. Exactly. And doing that type of work myself, I know what it feels like, okay, to be surveilled because I have night vision equipment. I have all this other stuff. And that's what I do. And I felt like this thing was watching me, this gut feeling that this thing knew that I was there and it was watching me. And how far out is this from you? I would estimate somewhere around altitude-wise, maybe 40 to 60 foot and 30, 40 yards off in the distance. I could actually make out the symbols, especially on the paddle part that stuck out. This tail is connected to a ring? It is, right. The ring appeared to be probably the size of a 50-gallon drum in diameter. 
So the whole length of this particular object would be maybe how long, do you think? From the wheel portion back to the tail, I would probably say no more than 10, 15 feet because there was a large oak tree directly in its path, and it seemed to be hovering over the oak tree. Now, as far as the distance between the top of the oak tree and the device, it's hard to tell because it was off at an angle, but it seemed like maybe 20, 30 feet at the max from the tree. Up in the air above it. Right. Now, was this absolutely stationary, or was there any motion at all? I saw no motion whatsoever. And when it started to move, its movement was really, really slow. It moved to the west at a very slow rate, maybe two miles an hour, a mile an hour, something like that. The ring moved forward, the tail following. It also had, like, protruding antennas. They weren't very large, but the wires, there were quite a few wires sticking out of the thing from the top. Now, the one thing that this thing did, Linda, that was sort of odd to me, the first time it moved, it was like a double image. You were seeing a double exposure? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was like it moved, and then you saw it one place, but you also saw it where it was before, like in two places at once almost. And that was the only time it did that, was just when it initially moved, and then after the movement started, I didn't see that anymore. And this Isaac information that has emerged on Tuesday, June 26th, describes this as extraterrestrial technology originally that has the ability to cloak so successfully that it can remain invisible unless there are jamming frequencies that interfere. And another huge part of the components related to this dragonfly, drone, whatever, is that it can project three-dimensional images Are we seeing extraterrestrial technology at work? Well, see, my question is, how can this thing move without making noise? There was absolutely no noise at all. It just moved. Something in the air that doesn't make noise that moves is not right. And so close to you. Yeah, exactly. The image that was there where it originally was and then the image where it had moved to, I was seeing two things, and then the other one sort of blended into it. It was like it sort of sucked it toward it. You're seeing what looks like a motion going forward two or three feet, and now there are two images of this ring. And how did it move from that point forward, and what happened to it? It moved at exactly the same altitude. It didn't go up, it didn't go down, but it slowly, at a couple, three, four miles an hour, moved to the west. And as it moved to the west, I followed it with my eyes, but there's so many trees where I'm at, it went in over a tree line and just disappeared. Once it got past the trees, I could not see it anymore. What was in that direction going west? Maxwell Air Force Base. You made a connection between Isaac's release of information and all the infrared. Can you explain that? Well, what makes me think that possibly the infrared, when I read the article, It said that this thing cloaks itself, but it can be jammed. And when I saw that, I knew immediately that I had all this equipment. And I'm thinking, could this possibly be the reason I saw it? Maybe I wouldn't have seen it had I not had the equipment around me and had it not been active, because it was active. And possibly had it been turned off, would I have seen the thing or maybe not? I thought, maybe infrared will detect it. And how many of these dragonfly-shaped drones are in the skies of this planet in both hemispheres and nobody knows because they're invisible? Yeah, that's the scary thing. I've honestly never seen anything like this before. Nothing anywhere near like this thing. It's so different, but yet it doesn't appear to be like a UFO. If this thing shows up again, if I had to climb up on a stepladder with a flashlight and get a picture of this thing. I'm going to get a picture of this thing. I know what I saw, and I know it's real. I think that the technology is definitely extraterrestrial. Nothing flies like this. Nothing I've ever seen moves and leaves a signature and then moves to one side, and then the signature moves from where it was over where it is now and disappears. I mean, your mind won't register that. It just doesn't, you know, it doesn't add up. A month after that interview with me, Two men dressed in black suits and dark glasses approached the Alabama infrared technician at his workplace, 
showed him United States government identification and told him to, quote, keep your mouth shut, unquote. He was shocked and angered at the blatant arrogance of anyone representing themselves as working for the U.S. government and threatening him when his own work is involved with security for agencies of the U.S. government. Then in January 2008, I received an email from Earth Files viewer Melody Melver Thaxton in Van Buren, Arkansas, a suburb of Fort Smith. In mid-November 2007, she saw a dragonfly drone very similar to Chad's photographs that had a long flat tail attached to a ring from which rose wires high in the air. The craft was completely silent. Melody's sister, who lived two hours west in Hartshorn, Oklahoma, also saw an aerial dragonfly twice in June 2003. The strange aerial craft hovered for an hour near the back porch of her house. She said lights glowed all over the aerial craft that was so close she could make out dark symbols or hieroglyphs on the edges of the ring. The object, not more than some 50 feet away, made intermittent buzzing sounds. Then, a couple of nights later in the same week, she saw the aerial object again covered by lights at a greater distance. Are all these dragonfly-shaped aerial craft back-engineered from the Palo Alto Carrot Laboratory that did the 1980s military-sponsored work to, quote, achieve greater understanding of the extraterrestrial technology, unquote, that the scientists, including Isaac, were given to study? Or did the 1987 to 2007 eyewitnesses see actual extraterrestrial technology? which can flicker in and out of visibility in mysterious and non-human agendas. Thanks for listening to this Earth Files podcast from the edges of science, environment, and real X-Files. Go to www.earthfiles.com to see more than a thousand Earth Files reports with photographs, drawings, and documents. And visit Earth Files every day, every week, for new reports and new podcasts. That's www.earthfiles.com. 